again we're looking at examples here and uh it's almost the same steps as before we're gonna we're gonna draw the triangles and then we're gonna figure out other trick ratios given given some initial trick ratios that sounds really confusing but uh that's what we're gonna do so given that tangent equals one over seven find cosine sorry given tangent of theta uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my triangle, just like before. And I'm going to pick an angle to be theta. It doesn't matter which one, because it, does, it, does, it doesn't matter. And then uh, it tells me that tangent is 1 over 7. So that means uh, toa. That's the toa part for Soka toa. Opposite over adjacent. So what does that mean? Uh, well... If I, I chose this angle to be theta, it doesn't matter. Uh, you could have chosen that angle, but I'm just going to choose this one. So tangent of that angle means the opposite side <laughs> is going to be 1. What? How do I know that? Because it tells me. Or something uh, that's proportional to 1. Uh, so opposite side is 1 opposite over adjacent. That's this side. Well, it says it's 7. Okay. It's 7. Find cosine, and that's the ka part for Sokotoa. So I have the adjacent side, but I need the hypotenuse. Well, how can I find the hypotenuse? As you, I could just use Pythagorean theorem. This would be the A, this would be the B, and this is the C. Like a red. It's red. It's the red C. Uh, so then I will take 7 squared plus 1 squared. That must equal C squared which is 49 plus 1 equals c squared, so 50 equals c squared, which means I square root the both sides, and I get regular c equals uh, 50, square root of 50, and I'm going to reduce that, that's 25 times 2, so that means this turns to a 5, so I have 5 root 2, that is what C is, so I take this, and I change it to 5 root 2, and then um, now I can find cosine. So cosine of theta equals the adjacent side, uh, 7, over 5 root 2. And one more time, because uh, this is what most, um, like how, how things are written, I mean it's not necessary, but... We're going to rationalize the denominator just because in most textbooks that's what it'll look like. So, I just multiply by the irrational part in the bottom and in the top. So, I just have cosine of theta equals 7 root 2, right, because that's the top. And then 5 times, square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. So, this becomes 10. So, I have 5 times 10 is 50. And there you have it, my friends. Shall we do one more example? Alright, let's reiterate what the heck I just did. So, they gave me uh, one trig ratio. So, given one trig ratio, find another trig ratio. That's something that you could look up if you're trying to find this, maybe more examples on your own. Given one trig ratio of a right triangle, find another. Uh, so, that's that's what we're supposed to do. And the first thing I did was I just drew a triangle, and I chose one of the acute angles to be theta. And then I have my right angle there. And then I remembered what the definition of tangent was, where I take the opposite side and I divide it by the adjacent side. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite. So I labeled. Opposite of my angle theta was 1, and the adjacent side... I labeled 7, right? Because this, if this is theta, then this is the adjacent side. So, opposite over adjacent, 7 and 1, okay, great, 1 and 7. Uh, then I needed to find my hypotenuse, and I used the Pythagorean theorem to find that. Because, why did, it, why did I need my hypotenuse? Well, cosine says that, or the, the trig ratio for cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. We had the adjacent, we needed the hypotenuse. So, use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse, and then find cosine, rationalize the denominator. That's it. Alright, another example.
So I'm supposed to find cosine if cosecant equals this stuff. This is crazy. And what do what do I do? Well, first thing I'm gonna do is draw a triangle. And then I'm gonna call that theta. I guess I don't need that little angle mark. Call that theta. And cosecant. What is cosecant? Ooh, that's a different one. Well, I just remember that secant is 1 over cosine. So cosecant is 1 over sine. Oh, and then remember that flips over this part. That flips over. Oh, I didn't realize it was recording still. Whoops. Uh, so 33 squared is 1,089. And 10 square root of 11 is 100 times 11. And that's just 110, right? Uh, one, 1,100. One more to zero. And then I will subtract a 10, 8, 9. Okay. And that gives me a square equals 11. I square root the both sides. And I get uh, a equals the square root of 11. Okay, this is the square root of 11. I change it in. A square root of 11. And I need to find cosine. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, that's very easy. Cosine of theta will be the adjacent, which is a square root of 11 over the hypotenuse, which is uh, a 10 a square root of 11. And once again, I will rationalize. So multiply by the irrational part in the bottom and in the top. So I get cosine of theta equals 11, because the square root of 11 times the square root of 11 is just 11. And the square root of 11 times the square root of 11 is just 11. So I get 10 times 11, so that will be 110. Yeah? Why am I doing this? This could have just canceled out. I get one tenth. Wait, I mean, that's the same as what this is. I just, well, why did I why did I do that? Cosine of theta equals one tenth. I mean, I can reduce that and divide both sides by, or the top and bottom by 11, but this is, it already simplifies to that. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to leave now after I reiterate. Uh, so, first thing I did was drew the triangle, labeled my angle theta, and then used... Oh, I had to remember what cosecant of theta was, and that was the hypotenuse over the opposite side. And then I used that definition, and I label some more of my triangle. That was these two sides. Use Pythagorean theorem, and then write out what cosine is. Very easy.